Hello everyone. We have started with a series of lectures on quantum computing topic. So welcome to the second video in quantum computing series of lectures and tutorials. Today's topic will be about the qubit. So without further ado, let's start right away. For the beginning, here is one fun fact. Did you know if quantum computer operates on 50 qubits, it can make use of 2 to the power of 50 states at once? That is really really large number. So, qubit represents the basic unit of information and it is the fundamental building block of quantum computers. It consists of two levels, labeled 0 and 1, described by the Dirac Brockett notation. In order to fully describe a qubit, we need two complex numbers. That is because qubit is represented by a two-dimensional vector space over the complex number c to the power of 2. Classical computers are performing calculations by manipulating bits. Classical bits can only be at one state at the time, 0 or 1. In comparison to quantum computers, that scenario represents the biggest limitation and obstacle for solving the most complex problems considering time and computational power, since Alan Turing set up foundations of computer science as we know it today, back in 1930s, with his prototype of computational machine called the Turing machine. Quantum computers do not have that kind of limitation because they operate on qubits, quantum bits. The reason why qubits are much more powerful than classical bits lays in fact they can exist in two states at the same time, both 0 and 1, and all points between them. The two levels 0 and 1 correspondence to the following vectors. Arbitrary quantum state, defined by the formula, means that qubits can be in superposition which is one of the fundamental concepts of quantum mechanics. Microscopic particles like photons, electrons, atoms, and ions that are representing qubits in a quantum computer are controlled by the control devices such as ion traps and quantum dots. We can understand the qubit by looking at Bloch's sphere, which is a representation of a qubit. Bloch's sphere is named after the physicist Felix Bloch and it represents a geometrical 3D space of a qubit. We will go more in details in the future lecture dedicated to Bloch's sphere only. Thank you for watching. Hope you have better understanding of qubits now. That would be all for now. See you soon with the next lecture. Please make sure you subscribe. Click on that bell icon, so you could get notifications when we release new video, like, and comment on the video in case you want to share your thoughts or ask any questions. You can find all the details about this lecture in the description below. You can visit our official website, www.steamiac.com, where you will find the entire article about this topic forum where you can ask and answer questions and be a part of our growing community. You can also find the entire source code for any given topic, all video lectures and many more.